Hi everyone, this is Gleb Bachmutter. I have this project that I use to show visual canvas testing with retry. And I've been expanding it. Unfortunately, some of the tests while working locally on my Mac fail on CI. As you can see, there is a red mark that says the tests have failed. And I'm using GitHub Actions. Let's look at the details of a failed test. So three specs were successful and the bar spec failed. The problem is, if we look at the bar, it just says, hey, the image is different, right? I'm comparing the good image bar chart to the new image and it generates the div. Here's what the test, the good image. If I go back and I look at my images, right? The bar chart. This is what the test is supposed to render using a chart.js library. Instead, it renders something else. Now, I've been smart. I knew that there could be possible errors on CI. Right? So, in my workflow that I call main, after I run all my Cypress tests, I actually upload all the PNG files. Right, using actions upload artifacts. And I upload them specifically if there's a failure. So if GitHub action run failed in my previous step, which is Cypress test, only then I say, hey, I want to see those screenshots and I want to see the images. And it grabs all the images in the root folder, which is where the div images like this ones are generated. And like if they fail, they would actually be wrecked. Now, let's look at the output here. So the artifacts are stored right here. I can download them locally. I can unzip them. I can see what's happening. So in this case, there are no differences in our images, right? But there is a difference in the bar chart. So the bar chart is blank. I don't understand what's happening, right? Uh, maybe let's look at Cypress screenshots that Cypress generates on failure. So this looks correct, right? So why did it fail? And then the image sizes did not match. So something is going wrong, right? I'm not sure what's happening. So what I really want to see is the video of a test. Because at least then it would actually show me more details and not the screenshots. So let's set this up for recording. So what I will do, I will run the project. And in this case, if we will look at my package JSON, I'm running the dev command that uses my start server and test utility to run the start command. And then the test is just called Cypress open when the port 5000 responds. So Cypress opens. Now I'm interested in runs. Right now there are no recordings because I haven't set this up for recording. So I'll say connect to the dashboard. Now the name of a project, I like using the name of a repo. Now usually when you just start recording, when you just make an account with Cypress for the first time with Cypress dashboard, you have your personal organization. I have my personal organization. I also have Cypress because I'm a member of a Cypress company. And I have my personal open source organization for all my open source work. So I'll put this under Gleb open source. And I'll say public. I'm okay with everyone seeing the test results, test runs, and so on. By default, you probably want to use private for your private company work. Set up a project. Now, this gives me two pieces of information. The project ID is automatically saved in Cypress JSON. Right? So I'll have to commit that file. But the second one is the recording key. Now I should keep this private so after I record this video I'll change that. But right now this is what I need to be able to record Cypress run on Cypress dashboard. Let me copy this ID, this key, so save it in my clipboard and now I'll set my project for recording. So how do I do that? Well I'm using Cypress GitHub Action. So I'll go to Cypress GitHub Action repo and I'll see under the examples record 
Okay, so apparently I need one more flag called record true. Okay, okay, I can do that. So I'll go to my main and I'll say record true. And then I need to set a couple of environment variables. So the record key is the one that Cypress is showing me right here. So how do I set it? Well, I go to my project settings, my repo settings on GitHub, and I'll go to secrets and I'll say new repository secret. I'll say the value of a key that Cypress generates. And I like using the same key or the same secret name as the environment variable name. Add secret. Okay. Now, what is this GitHub token? This is a token GitHub action creates automatically every time GitHub workflow executes. So you don't have to do anything. It's not your personal token. It's what GitHub action generates to actually access the GitHub repo. And that gives me everything I need. So I'll just copy everything right here. I'll go to my workflow and I'll copy paste this. Now my VS code plugin that validates the GitHub action workflow YAML complaints, but because it doesn't understand the syntax. But this is the syntax for grabbing the secret that I just set through the GUI of a repo and storing it as environment variable. So when the GitHub action runs, it will grab that record key from environment variable and use it. By the way, one more secret, we need GitHub token in some cases when you want to rerun a GitHub action, because then you want to know that you're actually not rerunning the same build from a second machine, but to generate a new dashboard recording. In most cases, you don't even need to set this. All right, so this is all set. We have two change files, right? We added things to the workflow and we added the new project ID. So I'll say record to a dashboard, push the code, and now let's look at the repository again. We go under actions, our workflow kicked off, checked out the previous node module so it can quickly run the CI. The GitHub action by Cypress takes care of caching of a binary, node modules, everything. That's why it's been able to do the install very quickly. Runs the npm start command because that's what we have right here. Then it will start the test. Now notice because we have Cypress record key and we pass record flag, right? It gives us the URL. I can click on this and this goes to our dashboard. And this is the first run for this project. We have our CI information and our continuous integration information. Let's look at this. So these are the two tests that failed. We can see the screenshot. This is the same thing that I set up to download, right? Which is kind of nice. I don't have to do anything. These screenshots are there. And let's look at the video, right? So let me restart this. Okay, so this is interesting. I'm gonna slow it down. All right, so let's go back. The test start. So here we are. So it seems, right, that we are not capturing the bar chart correctly. All right, because the bar chart is there, right? But it seems like we're grabbing it way too soon, right? And we are not getting the right image before the comparison. And even better to see this, right? The arrow that we're getting is not actually the image is not there, but the image size doesn't match, right? So in this case, I have to look at the size of a window that the browser is using on CI versus the image that I saved locally, because those two things we probably will have different sizes. As you can see, I'm expecting a canvas of 30 and 31 pixels by 64. And this probably gives me something else. Okay, so recording the cyber dashboard gives a huge advantage. Not only have all my test results, without anything to set up extra on the CI, but I can actually slow down the recording, inspect the video of every failing spec and understand why the failure has happened.